Okay, muy buenas noches to everyone. I hope everybody's doing well, blessed, and enjoying family. And before I start off, les quiero mandar un fuerte abrazo, saludo, y mis más altos respetos to everyone. As thank you for, you know, you guys' kind words, prayers. I wish I really had the words to express them to you as they make me feel, but, you know, I'm a dummy when it comes to that, but I uh, do know that from the heart, I really appreciate you guys. Okay, well, for for this time, I want to speak about a camarada. You know, I've seen... Uh, Numerous times the question, what happens to a camarada or a homie when a pili falls? What ends up happening to them? And the answer could be extended real long. You know, sometimes there's certain camaradas that are not just loyal to one, but to a couple. So they might actually pull through. But overall, you know, Billy's are greedy, so some of them like to be exclusive, you know. You work for him and only him, you know. You don't take no other directions because they start getting paranoid, to be sincere. They start feeling like what's being done or spoken amongst you as a camarada and him is also being related to the other Billy. Which you know, it ain't, it ain't even, uh, it ain't even true. Well, in the most cases, you know, because most Billy's, they really look frown upon that, you know, comadre stuff. You know, they respect you more when, when you know how to keep shut, your mouth shut. Or you're aware when they try to, you know, try to hook you to expose of what the other señor is doing. But I thought I, I would give a, an example better than uh, to try to put it into words. So please allow me to to tell you a little a little bit about a camarada they call Gypsy from from Arta Trece or Artesia Trece. You know, this was an older camarada. He must have had me for for what, maybe 15, 20 years. I actually met met him in the hole in Ironwood, but before then I had already heard his name actually quite a couple times. Cause if you guys are aware of my story, you know at this time I was I was supporting with Eight Yard to Terco and also so you know I was pretty much aware of the things that were happening on other yards. I I know they had already tried to move. He, when he first got there, they tried to move on, on B yard, you know, try to take over, you know. It didn't really work out for them there. And, you know, as time went by, uh, I ended up catching the case I got put in the hole for, which was actually his homeboy. Well, you could say that, you know, it was uh, Guarito from Chivas, so... I was back there, and while I was back there, it just, uh, the whole Mesa came from, uh, from Sea Yard, you know, the vato that was piloteando todo was silent from King Cobras, you know, just Gypsy were able to get out there, put a crew together, and, and, and politic against them to the point where, you know, they removed them from the yarda, but at the same time, they, you know, homeboys, they bucked up, so they ended up all in the hole. And, uh, at this time, Gypsy was doing everything for Boxer, you know, it was a time where Boxer was, you know, I really believe he he had already said it, said it in his mind that, uh, 
he was going to check in, you know. He, so he was trying to get as much possible so that once he felt they were going to get him, uh, his own brothers, he, he was going to do what he did, you know. So while he's back there in the hole, it's actually when it happened, you know, when Boxer decided to, you know, to, to say yes to. I remember we were back there and, uh, you know, he had tried to take over all the yards really in Ironwood, you know, one way or another. For example, A.R., when I was there, he, he actually tried a couple times, you know. And, uh, but while we're back there, we started hearing rumors, you know, that over there in, uh, in Pelican Bay, he had, uh, he had taken the, that walk of shame and he had already checked in. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're camaradas, so there's no point of, of us uh, even discussing Pili's issue, you know, in the whole. It was amongst them, and we understood that when we're on the yard, it was, if it was boogie time, we were going to boogie. It's just how it was, you know. I took on the responsibility to support someone, and he was supporting who he felt right to support, you know, for for the reason, as he told me, it was it was his homeboy. Which, you know, they should already, well, at least, you know, I understand their homeboys, but once they, they reach that stage, you know, it's, uh, it's well understood that they're no, more, no longer camaradas, you know. They say it real clear, you know, they're beyond Sureños, they're on, on their own their own league, their redowns to to their neighborhood. So, you know, I think it just goes to a certain point where uh, where you can still consider someone like that a camarada to at least to do things faithfully, blindly for him, you know. But needless to say, you know, he, he was doing it. You know, he felt... He felt the uh, boxer was always going to have that power because he had a lot of people and he was pushing his weight everywhere, you know. And uh, for years he'd been doing this and nothing has happened, you know. And uh, but it was for a lot of reasons, you know. Topo was there and I remember their faction was still strong, you know. Uh, but once they all started picking up fed times and getting moved, Topo went to Corcoran and he checked in and it was just. Uh, the writing was on the wall, you know, he, Boxer was done, it's just a matter of time before they got to him, you know, because for a while, you, as, I, as I know, it was out in the open, you know, the Colote was calling his own homeboy out on the tier, you know, so, anyways, dispensing, I lost track, back to Gypsy, uh, so he, we were back there, you know, when we went out to the group yard in Ironwood, uh, we went out side by side. For example, if we had the yard on one yard, and then there was two yard. There was camaradas on one side, and then there's the little hallway where is the hudas, and then there's the other yard, right? But we were still able able to to hold toricas amongst each other, you know. So. You know, it comes to an understanding once you reach that uh, that stage to hold a position for a pili, you know, you're a camarada. So, amongst camaradas, we we respect each other. So, anyway, we talked and uh, he was worried, you know. He was worried, you know, because he was supporting Boxer and he didn't know if it was going to have a, a backslash towards him, which, you know, the only thing that, that at that time I was, we were uh, thinking he would be safe because he had 20 years under his belt, you know, doing things for them. And uh, it just at one point he uh, he decided to go with his homeboy overall, you know, instead of keeping, you know, open to supporting wherever he landed, he, he decided to stay loyal to one person. And so he was worried, needless to say, you know. I remember uh, 
well, he, he caught a case back there, and, uh, you know, I spe spearheaded a, a cell extraction. I, please forgive me, I don't recall if uh, I already told about this cell extraction we did for for Sapo from San Pedro due to homies being getting done wrong with from the Hudas. I don't want to repeat myself, so anyways, we did a cell extraction behind that, and, uh, you know, when they go up in your cell, once they throw them shot grenades, you can't see nothing, you can't hear nothing, so the only thing we had was, you know, get a couple socks, some so some soap, and wait for the door to crack, you could hear the metal, so, and just come out swinging, you know, which at almost all the time, it goes bad, you know, it's <laughs> 100% of it, like, for example, when I did it, it was like, I just ran out swinging, and uh, they moved aside, the minute I, I think I came out that door, they started bleep, 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 down, fish handcuffed me, and took me out to the yard, and got stomped out, you know, but, anyways, back to the story, homeboy, when uh, he came out swinging, he actually connected, you know, to, to a, to a CO, so we ended up doing some some time back there, you know, and uh, I remember when uh, when I ended up going to the Atchipi once they gave me my shoe term, they had just uh, gave him my shoe term too, but I took off to to the Atchipi and uh, he took off to the Atchipi right after me, but he went to the A side shoe. I was on B b side and seven block so anyways we keep tabs on where we're at you know because uh once you hit a yard it's good to always know which camarada's been under somebody's wing so so you know which ones you're able to rely on and trust you know especially when you have see when you hear about a camarada working for a certain billy right away you start connecting him to that billy you know and you start thinking that the camarada is like the pili, you know. But uh, I ca came to learn that that's not even the case, you know. There's sometimes it's uh, there's loyalty there, you know, beyond that pili sureño thing, you know. Which was this was the case. It's why he stayed loyal to boxer, cause it's his homeboy from his time, generation, everything. So, anyways, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be as clear as possible but uh anyways time came as you guys know my story i went to the 180 and a whole bunch of bs happened because i was meant to do something for the for peanut butter for chino and uh i ended up getting snatched up and back and uh by that time i went first i went to a block so they were going to kick that, kick out Gypsy to B yard. They had brought him from A yard shoe to the hole on B yard, with penny kick out to the 180. And uh, he came out with us to the concrete yard, you know. And there was, I wasn't under Terco no more, so there was no reason or no type of conflict amongst us, you know. It, there was never conflict. It was just, you know, I'm there. I'm going to make make the Pili be respected while I'm here, and not. Uh, you step on that and, you know, a soldado, I have to do what you would do in my place. It's just, it's it's well known amongst us. So, we talked and uh, I think his homeboy Tecolote was pushing for him, you know, trying to keep everything at ease. And he was feeling more calm, you know, he was out there with us on the group yard, he did his shoot term going out to the concrete yard, so... Everything was looking, you know, pretty calm, you know, and all. Because most of the time when something's going to happen in the ruby arts in the shoe, it was when it was going to crack off, you know. But anyway, when I went to 8, bar, the eight Block, excuse me, in, in B Yard, and the hole, that's the hole, they ended up giving me the shoe turn back and shot me back to, to 7 Block. And, uh, I took off first, and then I heard Gypsy went to, to BR-180, and, uh, for a month or two, 
two three months I forgot how long it was it was uh, some issues happened as I told my story again I don't want to repeat myself but uh I ended up catching something there and I went to five block as I went to five block it was like three months after we had left a block you know we just heard the alarm go off and they had tried, they had moved on Gypsy on uh, on the 180 in the B yard, you know, and it was weird because, uh, like I stated, he had a long time. He was actually was short timing it or getting ready to be transferred to the feds. So as far as I knew, the colote was chilling him to that point to where he got to the feds where he was going to be safer, you know. So, anyways, all that happened, you know, they stabbed him. Got you, you know, real got you. I mean, they they tried to take boy's life. So, just uh, imagine putting four camaradas on a bat, on a vato, and, uh, you know, all four of them. Two of them go for the lower part. The other two go for the juggler. We don't want this for breathing. It's just, I say this so you guys kind of get an image of it, you know, and, uh, they tried to take his life, he got back there to the hole, I remember, uh, he actually got, they shot him straight to five block, because the hole was full, and, uh, at this time, as I mentioned before, you know, Danny from, uh, White Fans was there, the senor, and, uh, you know, Beto's nephew from Bowling Park was there too. He was he was supporting Danny. He was in front, you know, for him at this time in five block. Well at least for, for B section. I was over here in C section. There was another coming out in A section that were supporting Danny. At least looking on paperwork and stuff, right? And when he got back there he tried to plead his case and they okie doked him again, you know, and uh at this time in uh, in Tehachapi, I wasn't validated yet. The squad knew what I was doing, so they they always kept me in that section. It was like every building, B section, and every building was a validated section, you know. And they kept me in, in B section for some reason always, you know, seven block, five block, eight block. So, anyways, and they okie dokie me went out there and. Hit him again, you know. It wasn't as bad as the 180, but it was bad, you know. Um, and then once everything st started to slowly start surfacing, cause uh, I used to get along real good with uh, with any boy. I used to call him Grandpa, <laughs> cause he he was one of those old men that was cool, cool as hell, man. He uh, he had gotten shot in the hip, so. You know, he, he he didn't walk right, but uh, he was a really happy Billy, you know, really cool. I liked him, you know, I'm, when I was in 7 block, B section, next door to me, it was him and Pancho, that's in your Pancho from Redu, and they were both, they were cool. Anyway, so he started telling me, you know, what happened here is uh, they seem to forget, you know, that, yeah, they're aware, you know, oh. I'm Danny boy from from White Fence, but I ain't from White Fence no more. You know, I, I'm from La M. I'm a senor. I'm above all that. You know, and uh, now this is a Billy telling me this. It is why I speak upon about it like the way I do. You know, because I heard it from their woke up. It's not no he says she says stuff. It ain't nothing I'm reading on the internet like I stated before. What I speak about is because I was involved or I was there when it was happening. And uh, he told me what happened was, you know, Night Out was never protecting him. His case, his case kept, kept circling after Boxer. They were trying to figure out what to do with him because for 20 years, everywhere he went, he was supporting and helping out and all. Uh, the last four years he went, he decided to stick to boxer, 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 and, and uh, they were 
trying to decide what was going to happen and uh, what what ended up happening was his own other homeboy night out the colote is the one that that pulled the trigger on him he said Charles I want this you know muerto I want him gone todas las deudas que dejó atrás boxer I, I want you guys to collect some of them with this vato that was there when you moved it with him you know and uh cause not boxer didn't just drop out man everything in the system everything you guys can imagine boxer actually told the hoodas about the way from you know when we were on AR shoe and Corcoran uh, from building to building the codes to the law library books we left we lost in you know and uh how, where we left him when we went to Big Yard, when we left him when we went to another, to each block over there. He told everything you guys could imagine about, man. So, but Gypsy's own homeboy didn't touch his heart from him, you know. The Colota said, take his life. You know, everybody else on their boxer had to go. He ain't no different. He's a pawn that his king... His king got taken out, so game over for him, too. It's why, you know, to all those youngsters that still believe in, in loyalty, pay attention, you know, to this, because this is two homeboys that grew up together. I'm just speaking about three homeboys that come up, you know, as kids. Same neighborhood, same barrio, went in, two became members. The other one, you know, he was there. For whatever reasons, he, he had juice, but he decided to stick to one more than the other, and uh, one decided to call it quits, and he took everybody with him, and that including his own homeboy, and when Peelies were actually considering giving him a slide, his other homeboy said, Charles, take him out, that's the loyalty that's there, and that's exactly what happens when a Peely falls. When a pili falls, it don't matter how much you've done for them. It has no meaning. Time it coming, can I have repeated it, you know. Whatever you do, you could do a thousand things right. One wrong decision, and that's your butt. No buts, no ifs, no excuses, you're gone. Because you're a throwaway piece. Keep that in mind. You know, and this is a... It's, the perfect case, you know, amongst homeboys, they couldn't have no loyalty amongst each other, it, it all, and it always happens like that, man, when a Billy falls, his whole crew is gonna go with him, you know, for those that stay naive and wanna keep pushing, it might not happen in a month, it might happen in two, but the minute they feel they have you comfortable enough to put a rope around your head, you're out of there. You're going to follow suit. Just like you were. It is why, you know, the smart ones knew better than to stay loyal to just one. The best way is, you know, get to Ayarda, strike up an Amapil. Estoy aquí dispuesto. Quien sea, de quien sea la Ayarda. I'm here to assist la causa. Nala M. You know, which is what it has become now, you know. Now it ain't about the causa. They don't speak about rules and regulations, guidelines, respect for family, respect for each other, uh, allow you to defend your pride, uh, solidness. It's about following la M. Staying solid for the M and in the M's eyes. It's not the cause no more. So just smart up, everyone. You know, there, there's just nothing there, you know. Nothing there. And, you know, I recently heard something about if you were in front of these individuals, you wouldn't call them tecatos. <laughs> well, it's obvious you don't know me very good, you know. But, uh, Believe me, uh, there ain't no fear towards these individuals. 
that we're speaking about these individuals though, you know. Because when these individuals are alone one on one, they're scary ass people, man. They're the biggest niches as there is, man. They drop out and they start telling, informing. They want to put them on an S and Y yard and they even scared to go there. They ask to go to a special program. I mean, come on. You know, they the only problem is they have some camaradas that they're still blind to them, so it's like one of them, old tecato vatos, with like a thousand soldados behind them. It's just, there ain't nothing you could do there. But, you know, again, I ain't here to, to try to spread poison to those that are in the gang, active, pushing, and doing their thing for for the Peelies. Not all the Peelies are the same, you know. Don't mistake my words. There is there is killers. There is solivatos. But at the end of the day, the Tecatos way is going to trump everything. And those are facts. It's shown time and time again. It don't matter how good a Peely is, he'll eventually let power overpower his his quota towards the causa, towards the camaradas. It's just, it's true. It's the truth, you know. As you guys will hear uh, at the end of my story, you know. But uh, anyways, I just thought I would share you guys the story of Gypsy Boxer and, and Tecolote, you know. And how this uh, this camarada he had he had 20 years or 20 something years under his belt, being in the system, pushing in the one. It started in the 180s. 270s he went down to a level three and he just made that wrong decision to trust someone that he thought he's a childhood friend you know and uh that that one childhood friend he was emmy you know emmy only takes about himself his pocket his venas but anyways i just thought i would answer you guys this question i hope i made sense and answered it right and I wanted to just say something before I go. With this recording or video, there's going to be a picture of the camarada I once told a story about, a little man from Moreno Valley, from IE. The one I told you guys that got sent to Nayarit to take out a comandante, and when he took him out, they gave him life, and he stuck in the penal, Beca Ranza in Nayarit for this. And he got left alone. As you guys recall, he's the one that when everything happened, when we hit there, uh, he got beat down with bad, so he got hurt mentally, you know. He's I was with him in the shoe. He's a good homie. He's a soldier. But he's at the point where he said, phone Jefita says, I don't want him out because uh, his mind ain't there, right? But just for those that are from might recognize him from their hood or whatever homeboy's a solid solid camarada and he's there alone you know ain't nobody showing any type of love so you know miguel little man just uh you know una carta a couple palabras you know uh, i have not talked to him when i was in that state i used to at least stop by to shoot him some feria here and there or Get him an Xbox, a little BS stuff, you know, or just shoot him a pollo frito for him to munch on and check in on him. But, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in that state, and uh, I know he's probably going through it, especially in the state where, you know, cartel runs everything, and camaradas, they associate us right away with Sinaloa. So, as you guys have noticed, we get done wrong. But anyway, <clears throat> I won't take much of your time. I hope everyone is, uh, has a blessed night. Again, please just follow what, what your mind, your heart tells you is there, you know. Don't walk butt backwards, you know go out like a rata like this this and that i'm not asking that just uh be smart you know grow up grow up mentally to the point where 
you could actually see things for what they truly are you know there ain't no love there there is no loyalty you know I did over 25 years of it and uh, they uh, it wasn't meant it wasn't worth anything they grabbed the palo and they where you guys know and in the worst way you know but and it was a coward's way straight up it wasn't directed at me you know it was done through a favor and uh, against my family and it wasn't like you guys think that I did something wrong they went after my family nah ain't nothing like that man it was a favor asked of me and I try to assist with the most suitable thing and uh, as you guys will hear it just they told me Mike te va cabrón por pendejo straight up but with this said I disculpe and uh, excuse my language in any way shape or form or if I t went off a couple times my apologies to everyone hope I didn't bored you and uh, again un cordial abrazo mis respetos please stay true to yourself Loyal to your loved ones. Muchas gracias y buenas noches.